Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our panelists who are going to share some great information. And thanks to uh, all of our attendees. Um, I think hopefully we'll have some more people joining us, um, but we'll go ahead and get started knowing that we are going to be recording this. And everyone can always reference back to our website after the fact. Um, so I am Laura Fox O'Sullivan. I am the president of The Commissary, which is uh, a food business incubator located in downtown Rochester. We're the only legal shared kitchen in upstate New York, only food business incubator in upstate New York. And we are uh, <coughs> happily welcoming uh, members. We have a couple of our members on the call, I see, and a couple applicants on the call as well, which is always great to see, as well as some community partners. Um, it is not a new phenomenon that food businesses uh, oftentimes require uh, some financing. And it is also not new information that uh, it is difficult in a risky industry like the food industry to um, get a loan or a grant, especially as a brand new business. Um, and in an industry that can be as risky as uh, the food industry in terms of failure rates, um, we certainly don't want anybody putting up collateral of their home, their car, anything, you know, a body organ, whatever it might be, um, to open up their business. So this workshop is for you so that you can see that there are options for you, uh, especially given what a blow the food industry and potentially your dreams of growing your food business um, have uh, gotten hit with in the last year. Uh, obviously, we all know that um, COVID has been very uh, tough on the food industry. So um, I also, I can't help but give a plug to the commissary. Uh, if maybe you found this workshop because you're looking to open up a food business, uh, the commissary is a really great resource for information uh, specific to the food industry. It's also uh, a great first legal home for your food business. So that means that let's say you have a um, underground food business, you do catering, maybe you bake cookies, um, maybe you've been tinkering with a sauce. Um, before you go out and sign a lease for your own space, um, come and join the commissary and just rent time by the hour. It's super flexible. Uh, our staff is here to help you. Uh, and, and it's also a great way, as I, I'm hoping that our friends in finance are going to explain, it's a great way to create some proof points for yourself so that you can go out and score that bigger loan or possibly grant um, to help you scale up your business. So without further ado, um, just a quick housekeeping thing. Um, everyone is muted. If you're not speaking, um, please stay muted. Um, we are going to be holding, as you can see, a really nice chunk of time at the end for questions and answers. And I really want all of you, the um, attendees, to feel like you can ask a specific question as you want. Don't feel like everything has to be generic. This is uh, here for you to benefit from. Um, so you can go ahead and start asking questions now if you want to. Um, but I don't want to get sidetracked and, you know, have Katie, for instance, on the hot seat for half an hour with questions, and then we don't get through all of our other panelists. So, um, so you can start asking questions now, but they might get answered throughout the um, period. And then we'll open up the Q&A in the chat uh, around 12.45, maybe even a little earlier. Um, and then I'll be asking a couple questions throughout, too. Um, if, if I think something maybe needs to be clarified. Um, so let's kick it off with Thad Schofield from the city of Rochester. Um, Thad is a board member for the commissary. So he is very familiar with the commissary. He also um, provided us the commissary with funding as we were building out. Um, so I can speak firsthand for the process of going through uh, with the city of Rochester and also Red Coke for funding. Um, and that is a great resource and he and his team are here to help and provide opportunities. So Thad, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much, Laura. And I wanted to start out by saying two big thank yous. You know, first, first thank you to each one of you. I mean, 
thank you for what your business is doing for the city. You are, you are very important to us. You know, it's why we're here and we're here to do everything we can to help you. So thank you for your commitment. Thank you for growing in the city. And we're going to make sure that we're by your side every step of the way. My second thank you goes out to Laura and Heidi, who, I mean, you're kudos to both Laura and Heidi. They're fantastic people to work with. The commissary is such a well-run organization and you're actually at a very positive advantage by working with them and in the commissary. And we'll do everything we can to assist. So, you know, the city of Rochester has, has four main goals uh, in our business development department. I am the director of business development. If I didn't say that, I apologize. Um, you know, we have four main goals. Number one, to create jobs. Number two, retain jobs. Number three, attract additional investment into the city of Rochester, which is good when people invest, businesses invest, restaurants invest, that there's a domino impact and domino effect where that those investment dollars will relay to other businesses and will continue to see the city grow. The city will succeed. Your businesses will succeed and it's a positive for everybody. Lastly, providing valuable products and services to city residents, that's extremely important. We wanna see that city residents have their needs met uh, whether it's through products and services of retail businesses or restaurants like yours, providing valuable food and, and commodities and services to our residents. So it's it's a win-win. When we partner together, not only will you succeed, but the city will succeed as a whole. And that those are our goals. So how do we do that? Um, we have different programs available that can lower the cost of doing business in the city. Now you've made that first commitment already by growing in the city and at the commissary. You know, we have different programs that can lower their cost of doing business, help with, uh, you know, needed areas, whether it's advertising, computer assistance, uh, FF&E, you know, marketing materials, things of that nature that can take your business to that next level. So when you're already, you're busy operating every day, you're working hard, you're spending a lot of hours, you know, our programs can help give you those added tools to succeed in, in the form of grants and loans. Uh, whatever it takes, you know, we'll be there by your side. Uh, one one product, to, I'll go a, a little bit into detail about some of our products, and then I want to encourage you to visit our website, www.cityofrochester.gov, backslash to the right, business resources, all one word, and then another backslash, business resources, and all of our products, is, products and services are listed on that site. Um, Generally, we'll help 50 to 60 businesses a year. Um, over the past 10 months during the pandemic, I'm very happy to say, you know, we have such a great team in, in City Hall. We've assisted over 500 businesses, um, you know, taken nearly a thousand applications. So, you know, our, our workload has really risen to another level and we're happy to do that. We're happy to, to help as many businesses as we can through the pandemic. And again, that's, you know, again, thank you to you for persevering and staying with the city and staying with us. We'll, we look forward to partnering with you. One of our products and services that I think that, that can be of real interest is our small business matching grant. On the website that I just gave are all of our products and services. I am assuming, and I think from being on the board, my board with the 21 businesses that are currently in the commissary and growing, we'll, we'll have more. Uh, there's a small business matching grant for startup organizations. Any businesses specifically restaurants are eligible to apply for this assistance. And this assistance can help with marketing, advertising, uh, FF&E, you know, chairs, tables, daily operating expenses to help your business operate and grow. It can also help with security equipment, signage, things of that nature for up to $5,000. Now businesses that have been in existence for more than one year are eligible to apply for a grant of $8,000. You know, it's, it's money that's meaningful. It can help you at the early stages of business to grow and succeed. Uh, we also have a number of loans, low interest loans, where our loans are anywhere between one to 3% interest rate. You know, um, our grants are used for renovations, equipment, soft costs. So when you're ready to graduate, move out into the community, create more jobs, you know, these products and services can really help you. And, uh, you know, we have a fantastic team. There's five of us right now. I do projects as well. Uh, we'll walk with you every step of the way through this assistance and this process and make sure it's as easy, efficient, and successful as possible. Um, you know, our, 
aside from what we have to offer, and I'm so glad ESL is on the line because they've been such a great partner of ours as well, you know, with Carly and, uh, you know, our, our, our council member. So, you know, we partner with ESL, we partner with every bank, every financial institution. So when you're ready to grow, move out into the community, create more jobs, have more expansion efforts, you know, we, not only do we partner with banks, we partner with Pathstone who's on the line, we partner with Kiva, we act as one team. You know, we try to make the process as easy, efficient, and cost-effective as possible, decreasing any red tape that we have. Um, so we know that you're spending a lot of hours on your business, and we're very grateful and thankful for that. So we want to make that process as a one-stop shop, and that when you work with us, you'll be able to see your success and also a very fast, efficient process to help give you that needed funding where it's needed the most. Um, so I gave you a lot of information. I apologize about that, but I'm, you know, I'm passionate. We're all passionate about helping you. You're in a great organization with the commissary, uh, you know, with great leaders and Laura and Heidi. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you succeed. We look forward to seeing you grow, see revenue come in for your business and your restaurants. And when you continue to see that revenue come in to grow, go out into our community, stay in the city, create more jobs, not only for your business, but for our city residents. And I give you my word, we'll do everything we can to help. Um, I'll be around for questions at the end. Uh, so please feel free to ask away at that time. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate all you're doing. Thank you, Thad, for, um, for that overview. Um, so if I heard correctly, it sounded like um, what you would see as the most likely option for uh, commissary members, knowing that, right, part of the beautiful thing about doing the commissary is that they're not gonna be purchasing their own equipment, signage, things like that, unless perhaps they're going to go vend at a market or purchase a food truck or a food cart or something else that's like a capital improvement like that. Yeah. Um, is that, is that specific uh, grant? still have um, some eligible aspects that would benefit from the members of the commissary? Yes, I think it would, Laura, and that's a great question. Thank you. Um, you know, it could also help with marketing if you're trying to, and I know the commissary markets as well, if you're looking to market or advertise and say, gosh, my business is in the commissary, you know, that there's a certain funding for that that can help advertise, bring more exposure to your business, attract more opportunities. That's an area that we can also help. So granted that, you know, the commissary has provided the signs and the FF&E and the equipment, there's a, there are other areas that we could look at and uh, that can uh, be a benefit. Um, wonderful. And so just so if, if everybody, uh, if, you, if you went to the link that I shared that Thad mentioned, specifically, it's the um, Small Business Matching Grant Program. Correct. That is correct. And yeah. most likely okay. for startup businesses, if your business has been in existence for one year or less. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, and in terms of um, understanding that uh, the businesses, could you, could you maybe speak to any um, credit needs or any other potential limitations? We know that if they're going to be in the commissary, they're going to be um, city businesses. Um, and that the type of business that they are, food business is eligible. Anything else that might be potential hurdles? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, we do have a fiduciary responsibility to perform a credit check analysis, but we're flexible. We understand that businesses are starting up. There's costs that are incurred. It's not always, it's not just a no, you know, we always are here to work through those processes. Um, we do look at you know, revenue increasing, things of that nature, because we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we utilize taxpayer dollars, you know, to be successful and to, to, you know, give it to businesses that will create those jobs. So, you know, if you have credit or some other issues that you think might be a problem, you know, our team will listen to you and we'll, we'll find out ways that we can work together. And it's, I, I want to leave you on a note that it's not a, it's not a no. You know, it's, it's a, let's see what we can do together. What can we do to get over these hurdles to help one another? Um, so don't be scared and don't be, don't shy away from applying with us. If you do think you may have some 
obstacles in your path um, because, you know, as partners, we want to see you succeed. And uh, when you succeed, we succeed as a city as a whole. So. Great. Wonderful note to end on. Very positive. Great. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to another exciting uh, funding opportunity that thank you. And so, Katie, the floor is yours with Kiva Rochester. Thank you. Um, just give me one second to bring up my presentation. Can you all see that? Awesome. Okay. Um, so Kiva is, um, well, Kiva Rochester is a hub site of Kiva International, um, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, the mission is enabling communities to expand capital access for financially excluded entrepreneurs. Um, we all know that dreams are universal, but opportunity is not. There's a variety of socioeconomic um, barriers at the systemic level that keep people from accessing a variety of resources. Um, and Kiva envisions uh, a financially inclusive world um, and try to do as much as possible to alleviate barriers to accessing capital. So um, as I mentioned, the city of Rochester uh, and Kiva Rochester is a hub site of Kiva US and Kiva International, um, which is based out of San Francisco. Um, we launched in 2016 um, with the goal of focusing on Rochester specifically, the, the greater Rochester region, um, small business owners and entrepreneurs from a variety of sectors at usually at the earliest stages of business um, development. We're an advocate, we're a guide, we're a support. Um, we connect entrepreneurs with other business resources um, since we focus pretty much exclusively on loans, um, making sure that we're also connecting um, to other resources to help with technical assistance and other areas, um, and also helping to navigate and succeed on Kiva's online fundraising platform. Um, and uh, so Kiva itself offers zero interest, zero fee, community supported small business loans ranging from uh, 1,000 to 15,000. Uh, as I mentioned, it removes many of the traditional barriers to accessing capital, um, focusing on minority and women owned businesses, but that's been expanded during COVID-19 to um, apply essentially to any business that's been impacted financially by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there is a, there's a grace period, um, it, it was just reduced. Um, so right now um, it's one to three months, um, but it was six months for pretty much um, the entire past year in response to the pandemic. Um, it's entirely online. There's no need for a paper application. It's crowdfunded at the grassroots level and um, supported by Kiva's national and worldwide network. So um, over the past, for a little bit more than four years, we've funded 123 loans amounting to over $700,000 with the average individual loan size of approximately 5,700. Um, the goal is to have a more equitable, diverse and inclusive economy in greater Rochester. So here's just a few um, statistics and overviews of um, the type of borrowers that apply for and receive uh, Kiva loans. Um, credit score is not a barrier um, usually the medium, median income is in the $20,000 to $40,000 range, um, but the vast majority are micro businesses employing four people or less. Um, we do have a number of people from the food sector. Um, the majority of them, this is their first loan, and the majority of them um, earned less than $25,000 in business revenue, so small, small businesses. Um, we... Uh, work to serve systemically financially disenfranchised populations, um, primarily people of color. 34% um, are women of color and 72% have credit scores less than 700. Um, so they, we try to address the missing micro. Um, so what, what traditional lenders uh, typically have in place is more extensive in terms of who can apply and what is needed. Um, so we try to um, eliminate the credit barriers, the collateral, collateral barriers, um, business extraneous, extraneous, um, extenuating business financials. Um, so then, um, as I mentioned, so here's uh, again, the, the loan size and 0% interest for generally 12 to 36 months. Um, 
we are at the bottom of the capital ladder. So again, it's best for people starting out. Um, sometimes we have people who've been in business for a few years uh, and there's no exclusion that way, but typically um, it's best suited for people that are just starting out or in the one to, th one to three year range of um, running their business. And uh, we are committed to working collaboratively in the community. Um, we work with a variety of support systems. Um, one is a uh, trustee, which if there is any interest, um, we, we work with community organizations um, kind of across the board, but the commissary for, for example, could be a trustee. Um, they're just local community organizations that support borrowers in accessing Kiva loans. Um, so they provide, um, they just help establish their credibility. Um, they endorse them when they are applying for a loan, which can accelerate their the applicant's review time and their um, chances of getting approved. Um, and they also are just kind of a support, there is support um, for the people in their network uh, who are borrowers, who are Kiva borrowers, um, just that extra level of validation and credibility. Um, so the loan program itself, uh, there's, um, there are a few qualification requirements, um, but they're pretty basic. You have to be a legal business over 18 years old. You must be using the loan for business purposes for the operation of the business. Um, you can't be in, currently be in foreclosure. And um, once you start going, it's a pretty straightforward process. You just fill out the application, um, which takes a pretty short period of time. Uh, provide a few pieces of information, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, we review your application. We get back to you and work with you if anything additional is needed or if it needs any um, tweaks uh, to be in a prime state to be approved. And then um, once it is approved, it's it, the fundraising starts with the private stage. Um, so that's when you would reach out to friends and family, anyone in your personal network. It's usually a pretty low minimum goal at the private stage. It's usually about five to 15 people in your personal network lending um, a minimum of $25 each. And then once you meet that minimum goal, uh, you will move on to the public stage and that's expanded to Kiva's na uh, national network. And 95% of the time um, when it reaches that stage, it will fully fund. Um, and then repayments. Um, Again, pretty straightforward. You go through PayPal, um, and there is some flexibility with repayment, but it's, it's typically 12 to 36 months, and the monthly repayment is calculated based on that. Uh, so Kiva is a little distinct from like a typical crowd funder. It has pros and cons um, from that, but as you'll see, the much greater success rates and um, much less onus on the borrower in terms of raising um, with typical crowdfunder, you're doing pretty much all of the work. And with Kiva, you just start at that private level and then it goes on to the public platform. And um, there's not as much fundraising needings come from you as the borrower. Um, and there's no fees. Um, and you also have support from Kiva with, with editing the profile, getting connected to resources and um, assistance with your fundraising campaign. So for business documents, um, even though this is the list of what um, really helps support the ap application and it's good to have at least um, at least one of these things, um, Kiva is flexible. So if you're just starting out, um, there are, um, we can work with you, um, but typically it's best to have um, business tax returns or incorporation documents, um, DBA, uh, as, as well as that trustee endorsement that can be helpful in terms of how much the borrower is approved for and how quickly they're approved, uh, whether or not they're approved, um, it's just good to have that credibility established. Um, so for the process, um, it's like I said, it's pretty straightforward. You just fill out the application. Um, it'll ask you some basic personal information um, for your photo, basic information about your business, um, and it can be used for a variety of areas, as you'll see here. And uh, this is the this is an example of the private stage, what your profile would look like. Public, it looks exactly the same. It's just going on to a larger um, sphere of people. And then once it's fully funded, you uh, go through PayPal to receive the funds. And that's usually within a week. 
Um, and then you have a one month grace period, one to three months before you begin um, repayment. So just some best practices for Kiva borrowers. Um, you should be tech willing, not necessarily tech able because we can because we can work with you um, if you need any assistance in that area. Um, but it is exclusively online. Um, and it's uh, impacted by a small loan, have a good picture and good loan statements. Um, sorry, some screen. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> My screen just went blank. Um, that was basically it though. If you, if you <laughs> need to reach out to me, um, <laughs> Let me just try to bring this back up um, for our contact information, but um, that is weird. Uh, but we do have office hours. You can get all of um, all of our contact information is on our website, um, which is cityofrochester.gov slash Kiva. We're on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can find us there. Um, you can also get started on your application just going to kiva.org slash borrow. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> so thank you. Great, thanks so much, Katie. Um, would you, oh, Hannah did it. Excellent, thank you, Hannah. I was gonna say if you can put her information in there. Um, but Katie, if you maybe wanna add the website as well, that would be great since it didn't pop up. Yeah. Um, but your contact information is in there. Um, we did have one question for you um, from the chat that um, should be pretty straightforward clarification on the greater Rochester area is that um, more than just Monroe County is is that a, a specific defined region though right now it is a specifically defined region for Kiva Rochester and it is just Monroe County um, however the Kiva platform is open to anyone um, so anyone can apply at kiva.org slash borrow from anywhere and um, it would, and you also still have support from like the general Kiva um, administration. And, and we're also happy to help. Like if you have any questions, like feel free to reach out. Um, but in terms of like the Kiva Rochester network, it is focused on Monroe County. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, and you covered a lot of the questions that, that we had asked you to cover. So I think we move right along. Uh, Adam Tidrow from Pathstone is up next. And Adam, I'm gonna let you take it from there. Thank you for being here. Wonderful, Laura, thank you so much. Uh, this is great. This is a lot of great funders who are looking to just help businesses and a lot of uh, partners and community partners looking to help businesses either get up and running or uh, stabilize or grow. This is wonderful. So uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm with Pathstone Enterprise Center. We are a CDFI, that's a Community Development Financial Institution. You really don't need to know that. What you need to know is what that means. And what that means is that we work with businesses for two reasons. We work on credit readiness, so getting you ready for the next step in, in business ownership so we can get you to a, a larger lender. Um, and we work with uh, business preparedness, so building you as a business, not just as a borrower. That way your business is stronger, uh, whether you're a startup or an existing business, we can work with both uh, nonprofit and for-profit as well. So uh, we focus on those two areas. And uh, it's interesting that we're between Kiva and ESL because that's kind of where we fit is uh, you come to us with maybe there's some, there's some credit issues, but maybe the business is um, you have a solid idea, you're ready to get up and running, or you are up and running. Uh, maybe you've gone through Kiva, now you need kind of the next level uh, of financing and even some additional technical assistance. So with our loans, uh, we can start at $5,000 and go up to $250,000. And if you're a startup, we tend to stay a little smaller. Um, that's just so that uh, we can build that relationship and we can see the business succeed uh, before we uh, kind of uh, strap more uh, debt to your back. And, and then you don't have to carry that huge debt load as a startup if you don't need to. So we, we work with you to make the best out of, to make the best use out of every dollar that you would borrow from us. So that's our loans. And we, we typically go between uh, seven and a half and nine and a half percent. That's kind of our uh, target interest rate. I don't know if we've ever gone uh, above 10% uh, on a standard loan like that. And we go between five and seven years in our terms. So you're with us for a while, we hope. And, uh, but in that time, we want to work directly with you. And that's uh, how we get involved with our 
That's how you get involved with our technical assistance programming. And technical assistance is, uh, you can view that as kind of free consulting and education. So as a business owner, there's a ton you want to know, a ton you need to know, and you just don't have time to be an expert in everything. Your job is to be an expert in your business. That's your job. And to run, to run your business and to succeed. Let us pair you up with the right experts or come in internally and work with our experts who are in the building. And, and we can do that for free. We have great partners uh, in the city of Rochester and throughout Western and upstate New York who allow us to do this work for free directly with you. And uh, that can be things like helping you uh, in the early stages build your business plan or uh, strengthen your business plan. Or even as you get up and running, we can help you uh, create a new marketing plan or create a new plan for, hey, I want to add a new uh, a new product line to, to my offerings. How do I do that? Well, let's Let's think it through. Let's strategize. Um, we have even helped people build their websites. We're in the process of, of finishing up one of those right now. We have excellent partners. We have a roster of individuals and companies who we work with uh, to make sure that we can bring that service directly to you as a business owner. And what we can't do internally, what maybe doesn't make sense for us to do internally, we have great partners in the area like SBDC and SCORE and, and other entrepreneurship and small business um, assistance centers that we can partner you with, uh, again, at really no cost to you, so that you can build your business uh, and really focus on being the expert in your business. So you don't have to be the expert in how do you write a business plan? How do you do financial projections? How do you do, you know, how do you uh, get all these licenses and everything? It's, we want to help you get there. So, um, so who do we serve? Typically, uh, our businesses are, they're kind of all over the map. We have a lot of startups. And we have a lot of existing businesses. The number one thing I say to people who ask, you know, can I work with you yet? It's, do you have an idea? Do you know what you want to do? And are you ready to at least start writing your business plan? Because I think we all know I'm an entrepreneur myself. I know that there are a lot of times where I go, I kind of have an idea, but I haven't really flushed it out yet. We would not be, what we would do is, is make sure that we're partnering you with somebody who can help you flesh that idea out, get you with the experts who know how to do that. So then when you come back to us, you're ready to, to take the next step. You're ready to get more technical assistance. You're ready for financing. You're ready for all of that. That way you're make, we're all making the best use of your time. So, uh, and I think everybody on this call probably knows their idea. They're ready to get up and running or they are up and running. And um, you know, so we can serve, you know, think we work with food trucks and uh, dine in businesses, carry out businesses. Uh, I actually just uh, spoke er earlier today with uh, somebody in a different state um, about uh, virtual restaurants. I had never really heard that term. But as the pandemic uh, continues to to impact us and change our economy and our landscape, uh, virtual restaurants have become a, a thing that I hear more and more about. So uh, we're even looking in into that, how we can best serve everybody uh, within the food service industry th the best way possible. So uh, again, really what we focus on is um, uh, business preparedness and credit readiness. And so when you come to us and you're ready to, to take on a loan with us and you say, hey, I need $15,000 to outfit my food truck or I need uh, $20,000 to, to outfit uh, my dine-in or $100,000 because I have a great opportunity to to you know, build an app for my for my restaurant or or whatever that is. What we'll do is we'll sit down with you and we'll ask for your business plan. We'll ask for your current financial statements or your you know if you, if you're a startup, we'll ask for financial projections. And even if you're an established business, financial projections are going to help us because it's going to help us see how you're using this debt really as an investment for the future. You know, I think that a lot of times we, we think of debt is debt and equity investment is equity investment. But really, as business owners, we should be thinking about debt being an investment in our business. How can I make this debt worth my time and worth my money so that I'm not just, you know, making money for a lender? So that's what we do. And we, we work with folks uh, who have uh, maybe damaged credit or weak credit or new credit. Uh, I know that's one thing that I've seen a lot in, in the last 10 years doing this, that there are people who... They've never had debt before. They've never taken on a credit card or, or a house or a car or even student loans. And those people who don't have student loans, uh, God bless you. That is, uh, I love that. I was looking at my student loan statement this morning and uh, just wanted to stay in bed after I looked at that. But, um, 
So we, we can help anybody, you know, we can take a look at anybody who has some credit issues or if, this, if you're in a startup, because I know that banks generally like to have, um, you know, like to see businesses that have a little bit of a track record um, so that they know they're a little more comfortable with that, that credit, uh, with issuing them credit there. So we can work with startups or maybe the business has had some iffy years, but now you're trying to turn the corner and you have some plans on doing that. And maybe you're just not yet uh, what we call bankable. And what we want to do is bridge that gap. Uh, our goal, we get a lot of our um, a lot of our clients come to us from banks, and the bank says, "Hey, we really want to work with these folks. They're not quite there yet. Can you help them out?" And that we can help through financing and technical assistance, and then build you to the point where the bank is knocking on your door and asking you if they can give you money. So that's uh, that's what we do, and that's who who we are. So again, we kind of fit between where Kiva is and, and where ESL is, and the best way to get a hold of us, and I'll put this in the chat, is uh, through uh, the Enterprise Center Inc. org. Uh, you can email us at pecky at pathstone org, which is p e c i at pathstone org, or you can call us at. I wrote the number down because it's different for Rochester. It's five eight five three four zero three three zero zero. Sorry, I, I work out of the Buffalo office halftime and Rochester halftime. We just had. Uh, Phones replaced. So uh, 585 340 3300. And I'll put all of that in the chat. Excellent, Adam. Thank you so much. Um, you made some really good points about. Uh, oh, Hannah's on it. She got, she got the phone number out. Great. Um, <laughs> Thank you, you made Hannah. some great points about the business plan. So I'm going to come back to that because I know Carly and Malik are also going to talk about business plans. Um, and just as context for both our panelists as well as our attendees, uh, the commissary does not require a business plan for our members upon their first year of membership. Um, but if people want to stay in the commissary past year, we do request that they have a business plan. Um, and I, I just wanna underscore at least at this point um, for our attendees, I think you're gonna continue to hear, although the commissary doesn't require it, um, because you might be still figuring out a couple, um, you know, details of, of where you want your business to go. Um, it is an essential part of uh, getting funding um, is, is to have a business plan. So just something to keep in mind, something to be working towards. We'll also talk about in the Q&A, a lot of good resources for how you can start to put that business plan together and know that you're not on your own to do it. Uh, so... Last but not least, and we did, Adam, you're right. This was Karen's suggestion to go in the order that we did. So it was intentional that uh, Carly and Malik at ESL are going to be playing uh, cleanup and they're going to um, walk us through the experience at ESL. And full disclosure, we worked right with BAD through the city and Redco and we worked with Carly at ESL um, to help fund the commissary. So um, I can vouch for Carly being uh, a very attentive and, uh, and helpful banker. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Laura. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen real quick. Let's see. Oops, I started at the end. So let me just get back to the beginning. Um, I think Malik is going to start with the first couple of slides. Yep. Just let me start with the first couple of, I'm going to start with the first couple of slides. Thank you, Carly. Thanks for having us. Um, we're happy to be a part of this. And I'm also happy to be a member of the uh, commissary board. I think Carly, we can go to the next slide. And I'll just talk briefly about what you see here. This is a little bit about ESL Federal Credit Union. We've been around since 1920. Um, been chartered as a credit union since 96. And you see that we have, um, Oh, oh, close to $5 billion in assets, and we're the second largest overall financial institution based on deposits. And um, we have about uh, cl close to 320,000 members. And for almost the past 20 years, we've been named as a um, top choice bank and trust um, since 2002. And this is our mission, um, to help our community thrive and prosper uh, with personal and business banking. Business banking is a goal um, that we that we have, particularly small businesses in, in, in Rochester. And Carly, if you want to go to that next slide. And this is this is what we have to offer. I'll let Carly get into um, all the details. One thing I'll say <clears throat> is that um, I know it was mentioned about a business plan, but I will I would just throw out a quote that if you uh, 
if you uh, do not plan, then plan to fail. So make sure that you are planning. Um, I, I think that you should always think about a business plan regardless of whether or not you need one or not. I know you don't need one for that first year of the commissary, but that will help you, I think, long term. And here is just some of the products that ESL offers. And Carly will get into a lot of the details here. Um, you know, obviously, we offer term loans for equipment as well as build out renovation costs. Um, equipment up to 80% of the purchase price and then build out re uh, renovations up to 75% of the cost. Um, we go as low, a lot of folks may not know this, as low as $5,000. And we do terms from one year up to 10 years. And we have um, a fixed interest rate um, that's, set at an that's set at an origination. And then um, a personal guarantee is required. You are the business. Um, even though you are separate, you may be formed separately, you may have an S Corp or LLC, but uh, you are the, the you are your business, so um, we do require a um, personal guarantee. So um, I'll let Carly take away the rest of the presentation, and then, then we we look forward to coming back for um for questions. Yeah, thank you, Malik. Um, thanks for going through that. Um, I wanted to do a brief overview of a few of the different products that I think um, cater to the, your industry. So the term loan was the first and probably the most common one. Another product that we offer are credit cards, business credit cards. Um, they're usually used for working capital purposes, which could be inventory, supplies, um, really anything that you need to operate your business from day to day. Um, you can also use them for really small equipment purchases. As Malik mentioned, our minimum for business term loans is 5,000. So a lot of times we'll recommend using a credit card for any small purchases that are under that amount. Um, and our product minimum for credit cards is 1,000 um, and it's a variable interest rate. Um, I usually recommend for startup businesses to start with a credit card. It's a great way to start building business credit. Um, and our, specifically to ESL, our underwriting um, for these credit cards is primarily based on your personal credit score. And then um, I also threw in lines of credit. Um, these are similar to the credit card. You would use it for working capital purposes, um, but they're a lot larger. So they start at 10,000. Um, these are generally for businesses that have been operating for at least a couple of years. Um, and at that point is when you would probably apply for a line of credit. Um, it is open-ended. They can be SBA guaranteed. And I'm going to talk about SBA guaranteed loans in a little while. Um, but basically, if a line of credit is SBA guaranteed, it's available to the borrower for three years. And then at the end of the three years, um, if you have a balance outstanding on the line, it's converted to a term loan. Um, which is calculated over calculated and repaid over four years. Um, these lines of credit are variable based um, and the bank wants to see that you're using the line appropriately, which would mean you kind of use the line as you're um, drawing down for inventory and supplies and things like that. And then you're paying it back as you're receiving cash in. So we would want to see that um, you're using it and it's ebbing and flowing with the, with the um, business as you're growing. Um, and then also similar to the term loans, we do require personal guarantees for that product. Um, as far as eligibility goes, we are a credit union, so we are geographically restricted. Um, for us, we're in the Rochester and surrounding counties. They're all listed there. Um, and you would need to become a member of the credit union. That just basically means opening up a savings account. Um, and this is also where our owner's dividend is deposited, um, which we do um, on a yearly basis based on the performance of the credit union. Um, in order to open business accounts or apply for a loan, we would need to see DBA paperwork if you're a DBA or entity formation paperwork and also proof of your EIN number. So a lot of the previous presenters um, talked about personal credit. We are a traditional um, bank, so we do require um, personal credit checks for all of our products. Uh, we generally look for scores above 650, and that's on the Experian model. I know that some of the different models um, have different ranges. Um, and our underwriting team, they review the credit reports and they'll want to see that all of, account, all of your accounts are up to date. Um, we look for delinquencies, things like that. So that's where we differentiate a little bit from the other um, partners that previously spoke. Uh, we also look at personal cash flow. So we'll want to make sure that um, we're not hurting you at all by giving you additional debt. And we wanna make sure that you can currently support all of your existing debt. Um, so we'll look at your credit report for that um, and make sure that by giving you additional debt, it wouldn't hurt you in any way. Um, I have some personal credit uh, tips and tricks. 
I thought I'd share. Um, it's always a good idea to monitor your credit report. You can do that with apps like Credit Karma or a lot of credit card companies actually have these tools on their apps. Um, this would allow you to know exactly where your credit score is and let you know if you're ready to apply for traditional lending. Um, if you don't have any personal credit, um, everyone has to start somewhere and this was talked about earlier too. You could try opening up a secured credit card, which is basically um, where you secure the credit card with cash. Um, so this helps you build credit. And we also have short-term loan products too that don't require as high credit scores or credit standards um, and that will help you build your personal credit. And I actually have links for those at the end of the presentation. Um, and then something else that helps is to keep your deposit accounts with the same financial institution that you're applying for credit with. This allows the bank to see how the account was managed and that it was managed properly. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about ESL specific underwriting procedure in case you're interested in applying for a loan. All loans under one, at or under $100,000 are accepted at any of our branches. Um, you will complete a credit application which would detail what the loan is for. We would ask what your historic revenues are, were if you have any, um, and then personal information as well. And then within two business days, you would either have a decision from our underwriting team or they would request additional information. And then some of that information could be historical financial data, um, could be tax returns, if you've been in business or even personal tax returns to verify outside income, um, a profit and loss statement, which basically details your revenues and your expenses for any given period of time. And then a balance sheet as well, which shows all of the assets of the business and the liabilities. They might also ask for a, what's called a debt schedule, which is just any information on debt that the business has. And then lastly, um, a business plan might be requested if you're a new business or even if you're expanding to a new business model. Um, for example, if you're just graduating from the commissary, um, it might be a new model for you. So we might wanna see exactly what you think that will look like. Um, just a little bit on financial reporting. It's very important to have up-to-date financials when you're applying for traditional lending, especially when, if you're um, growing. So um, I recommend trying to find a good accounting software that works well for you. There are lots of low cost options um, and there's lots of online tutorials. So I would recommend trying to do that. And then also trying to get into a groove with maintaining that data. So it's currently up, so it's always up to date. Um, it's always better to have it up to date than have to go backwards and try to consolidate everything. And then once you're ready, um, we always recommend working with a CPA or a bookkeeper to look things over. Um, and then business plans, uh, a little bit on this. Why, why do we require a business plan for startups? Um, because it really details how you plan to succeed um, and it helps you to think through different obstacles that you might run into and then how you plan to overcome them. Um, but more importantly for the bank, um, we wanna see financial projections um, showing um, how you would plan to repay the loan essentially. Um, and then it's also an SBA requirement, which I'll talk about in the next slide two slides from now. Um, and then there are a lot of online resources for business plan, business planning, and there are free tools and templates, which might be a good start. And then also there are good local organizations like SCORE and SBDC. Um, you might also ask your friends and family to review these, um, what better place for honest and open feedback. And then keep in mind that it's a living document and it should always, it should constantly be needing updated as your business evolves and as time goes on. Um, a little bit about what the credit department would look for once you apply for a loan. Um, these are the five C's of credit. Um, conditions, which are the loan purpose, what you're planning to use the loan funds for. Capacity, which is cash flow, which is the number one thing. Character, credit report and account history. Uh, collateral, what would collateralize the loan? Um, that would be equipment or, or it could be unsecured as well. And then capital, which would be your owner's equity. Um, this would be we would be concerned about this both for a down payment for any financing, but also for operating capital. We recommend a business keep um, on hand around six months of operating costs, um, especially for newer businesses. Once you're operating for a while, you might be able to have about three to six months. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about SBA loan guarantees. The Small Business Administration doesn't actually provide loans, but they guarantee bank loans um, and that helps eliminate risk on behalf of the bank. Um, it's a great resource for new businesses and or inherently risky businesses. 
um, such as the food industry. Um, and what's great about the SBA is it allows banks to do loans that they wouldn't normally do. Um, so it, it really helps banks um, just to get that capital out the door and make them feel a little bit more comfortable. And then lastly, I wanted to say how the commissary helps um, with getting a traditional financing. Um, it helps because it helps you build that historical performance and track record. It keeps your costs lower compared to outfitting a space and entering into a lease agreement. Um, it also helps you save so that you have that operating capital on hand when you're ready to apply for financing, as well as that down payment that Malik and I had talked about. Um, and also it helps strengthen your network. Um, and as I mentioned, any of our branches can help with any lending needs that you might have. Um, you can just head into any of the branches and set up an appointment um, with anyone there. And then these are the links um, for both our business banking homepage and then those personal credit tools that I mentioned before. Thank you. Thank you, Carly, that was great. Um, uh, before we jump off of your presentation specifically, I did want to uh, echo what Carly said about uh, their suggestion of having six months of operating capital in reserves. Um, that will still apply to members of the commissary, meaning that suggestion. Uh, the only difference is that it'll be less, right? You won't need as much um, to operate in the commissary necessarily if you're not having to um, you know, pay down a loan for equipment that you purchased and pay monthly rent and utilities, um, cleaning supplies, linens, things like that, that, that are included in that hourly rate at the commissary. Um, so uh, again, thank you to our presenters. I uh, just shared a lot of information. Again, this will be recorded or it is being recorded. And so uh, it'll be up on our website. It's a great resource for people to refer back to. Um, for those that shared PowerPoints, is it all right if we include that on our website as well? No reason not to? Okay, great. Um, and what I would like to do is, unless we have a very quiet uh, group of attendees, I'd like to open it up so that people can unmute um, and, uh, and ask their questions directly to the panelists. Again, this is uh, for you. Um, I'm, if you're probably thinking of the question, someone else is too. And um, if there are no questions. I'm just going to start picking people from the attendee list to ask questions. No, I'm kidding. But um, I'll, I'll, Karen and I will start to ask questions if no one has any questions. Anybody? Hi, Laura. This is Alex Curry. Um, I just have a question for you. Yeah. Um, does the commissary have any like monetary requirements? So like that three to six month threshold, do you not required, but like, is that something you guys want to see when accepting an applicant to the commissary? So we, at least at this point, we do not uh, require, you know, we, we don't look at any background financial information. We don't run a credit check. Um, so that's really for you as the business owner uh, to just know for yourself that, um, that we highly recommend that because you know, as a lot of, and, and I know you're in the, the grind of it right now, uh, putting together all of your, the legal documentation, um, that those costs do add up. Thankfully, they are one-time costs, um, a lot of them, uh, but we just want to make sure that once people get through that hump, that they're able to, um, uh, you know, pay for their time in the kitchen, plus obviously whatever product they're going to need in order to go out and, you um, and sell their product. And I love Thad's idea of using that matching grant from the city um, for advertising. However, it's worth noting as we're kind of tying together all these different funding sources that it is a reimbursable grant, uh, which means that you've got to spend it yourself to then get the, that 50% match back. So let's say you spend $4,000 on marketing materials um, and maybe, uh, Thad, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe, maybe you're not good at social media. I know I'm not. Um, and you want to hire somebody to do that for you. Um, Thad, could they, could they have a contract with a company to do that? Or is it more like, here's the project, here's the website. I built the website. It costs me $2,000 and then they can 
invoice for a thousand dollars back? Um, well, very good point. Um, so to be clear, yes, it is a reimbursement, number one. The second part that's most important to know is that first you would need to apply, be approved, and then we would need to have an agreement signed. And there would be all expenses after the date found on that approved agreement. Uh, but if you hired someone who could assist with marketing um, to, you know, website development, that would be an eligible expense. Just please be certain they do not incur that expense until after it's approved by the city and you have an executed agreement. Um, we utilize HUD funding through that are called community development block grant funds. And they have different rules and regulations that we just need to make sure we abide by. Uh, but our team will walk with you every step of the way on that. And a uh, follow-up question is, can people get approved for, for the small business grant and make uh, multiple submissions of completed aspects of the project so they don't wait till they spend all the money they're going to get back, but maybe they can do it every six months or every four months or something like that? Yeah, yes, and great question, Karen. Thanks. Um, so the grant, if you're approved, um, and I know you know somewhat about this, Karen, working here. <laughs> uh, if you're, if and when you're, change. Right, you, know, you never know. If and when you're approved, you have a, we would have a signed executed agreement. After that date, as mentioned, um, you would have up to one year to be able to uh, incur ex the eligible expenses uh, found from the grant. So, you know, you could have multiple submissions. You could say that or in our business development team, we have, this is our first submission. We did marketing for this amount and then still do more when you incur more funding because you don't want to do it all at once. You want to make sure you have enough funding for your business to grow and then have another submission maybe a few months down the road. Uh, as long as you're within that one year time frame, you know, items would be eligible uh, after the approval. Great question. Yeah, so that kind of brings it back, Allie, to your question of no, we do not require anything. We just want people to be cognizant that there are a lot of upfront costs to launching any business. They will be less if you're a member of the commissary versus going out on your own. Um, but we just would hate to see somebody uh, join and not have the funding to be able to actually grow their business at the pace that they had imagined. Any Thank you. Other questions, of course. Hi, good afternoon. You guys have any suggestions for help with the business plans? Great question. So there are- Dallas, a, a brand new member of the commissary. Great. <laughs> so there are several different places that can help with business plans. Many very good ones. Uh, you know, in, the, in City Hall, we have the Office of Community, Community Wealth Building with Lomax uh, Campbell, that is one resource. We have another one in uh, the Urban League of Rochester. We have SCORE Rochester. There are many within the community that um, can assist with business plans, including, as I mentioned, the Office of Community Wealth Building right here in City Hall. Um, you know, your, your business plan is your calling card. That's gonna be your best tool and your ticket to not only present to the city, but also to banks and credit unions, uh, such as uh, Malik and uh, Laura represent. Um, so, you know, it's good to have a great business plan, you know, do your homework and really have your best foot forward in the case that you're presenting. And it really shows all the hard work that you've done. So it's a, it's a great tool to have. There's many places that can help. Okay, and, the and, thing I have... say, and the thing I would say about business plans too is, is that being that there are so many different people, you want to make sure that they are folks that you're, you're comfortable with. Uh, because you might, you might start talking about your business plan with someone and they may not get your business. So um, you know, talk to SCORE, talk to Community Wealth Building, talk, you talk to two or three people to see what their approach are to, to, to how they would help you craft your business plan. And then based upon that, um, you know, make your selection on who it is that you want to help you. But, but to um, the point that was just made, there's so many people out there that are um, able to help with business plans at no charge, but you want to make sure that you have a good rapport with them as you're talking about um, your business. And, and, and any good business plan folks will make sure that they kind of um, connect you with people who might be in the food industry, right? Because your business plan is different than somebody that's selling um, sneakers, right? You're, you're in the food right. business, so your plan might be a little different. So you wanna make sure that you're being connected with people who are familiar with your industry and can really help you um, build out your plan. So that way when you come to ESL or whatever financial institution you go to, it's thought out and it's um, something that's gonna be able to help your business go, grow and you can revisit it 
um, you know, in the future as you grow your business. Okay, thank you. And then I have one other question. What um, suggestions on where I should go for publishing my LLC? I've already uh, started the first process, but now I need to publish it. So I'm pretty, no one here is a lawyer, so we're all biting our tongue, but I'm pretty sure because Dallas, right, we talked about that last week at the legal entity uh, one. I, I say let's, let's connect you with VLSP who ran the workshop last week. I'll send an email um, about that. I'm pretty sure you're going to have to do it in um, the DNC and another one but i i it can be very expensive and i it, i i the daily that, record the, the daily record or the rbj yeah so you might you definitely should check with um vlsp if that's who you worked with before to see where that is, see where where to um where you need where you want you know you would publish that that type of thing but to her point there is definitely a cost yeah yeah I remember, so I, right, we've been through this with the commissary. I've learned a lot of these lessons too when we had to publish our LLC and it was a bit of a punch to the gut, right? That you thought, oh, we just got through this process. Now now we have to publish it, What? who cares? It's a rule, <laughs> gotta do it, yeah. uh, unfortunately. Um, so I will connect you in an email with, with the people there to get that answered. Any other questions from the group? I had a question about the technical assistance that Pathstone offers. Adam, is there a fee for any of that technical assistance like the help of the business plans or are you mostly dealing with people that are also loan applicants? So it's just sort of incorporated in the loan structure. Great question, Karen. Uh, we did, we never charge for technical assistance uh, for any of our, we do group education workshops so we can have, uh, we're actually getting ready to start a, a really long series. It'll be our final really long series um, for, for women, for uh, women who are entrepreneurs. But then we also have kind of shorter series where we can go four to six weeks uh, or, you know, three or four weeks. Um, then we have the one-on-one -on -one technical assistance where we can work with you uh, on fine tuning your business plan and, um, making sure your financial projections are up to, to snuff and, and, and everything uh, along that line. But no, we don't charge for anything. And um, our goal is if we're working with you on TA, we have a goal of at least applying for a loan through us. You know, it's, you're in that lending pipeline. Thank you. Also, is there a way that we at the commissary can get um, regular updates on the training? This is actually a question for all, all of the panelists, but we know that each organization has some of their own seminars and workshops like this one. And, you know, people have different schedules. We're dealing with a large number of entrepreneurs in the commissary. How can we get information on all of your offerings in advance so we can sort of push the information out to commissary members and applicants? Uh, I'll, I'll start. Um, if you give us your email address, we can add you to our uh, email list. And we send out a couple things every week, uh, especially as we uh, ramp up a new series or new offerings. And uh, yeah, so if we get, if you get your email, if you put that in the chat right now, I will add everybody to, to our lists. Um, and actually, so with us, uh, when you sign up for one of our uh, courses, you get uh, reminder emails and then you even get the material afterwards. So we, uh, we have a YouTube video of, of the training. We have uh, the slide deck and, and all that. So you, it's, it's more than, you know, just that hour or hour and a half, you get that information, you know, forever, you know, on uh, digitally. Wonderful. Any other further questions from the group? How often do you get to be in a room, virtual or otherwise, with people who are, want to get you money? Yeah, I, can I say something on that? Is um, I, I say this on everything that, that I get to do with other uh, lenders and, and funders is everybody in this room wants to say yes to you. Everybody wants to say yes to small businesses. Nobody likes saying no. And we're all in these, you know, in our positions because we like to say yes and we like to, like to see small businesses succeed. 
So any questions we can answer, we want to, and any way we can help, you know, just let us know. I have another question. So being that I'm, I'm more interested. So now that I'm like actually into my business, I'm more interested in just being a caterer and personal chef. Would I, if I get a business loan or grant, am I allowed to like buy, like, I'm just trying to make sure I understand it. Cause I just need like, you know, like cooking supplies now, like pots, pans, knives, things like that. And I just want to make, is that like part is, is that part of like equipment purchases? Well, speaking for Kiva specifically, like that absolutely would apply. Yeah, equipment, um, pretty much anything that applies to the running of your business. It's, it's, it's pretty general. Okay. And, and I don't want to speak for Thad, but right, that I would think that that would fall under furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So they use this term F, F, and E, furniture, fixtures, equipment. Um, Would that count? Or does it need to be bigger stuff? Generally, it's um, um, with HUD regulations, it's a little bit larger materials like tables, chairs, um, things of that nature. Um, but if you send us the list or if you apply, you know, we'll look at it and we'll explore it. And again, we want to do everything possible to help. Uh, similar to what Adam said, you know, all of us here are, are here because we want to help. We're passionate about what we do. And, you know, collectively as a team, we could find ways to help and give every effort to do that. So, you know, there's a lot of perseverance with starting a business and helping and seeing your way through that. You know, everybody on this panelist section is here to help do that. So, you know, let us know what, what your needs are and we'll explore every possible avenue. So Dallas, one thought I have, and this I think would apply to a lot of people here, um, and uh, would be maybe to go to Kiva for those physical costs, and it's super flexible, right? It is a loan, but it's a no interest loan, correct? Right. So, so the idea, which is a beautiful thing, so you could start by applying to Kiva, uh, and then know exactly what you're going to need for that, and and if you would want, I I think he's on the call. Arthur, you know, could help you a little bit with like figuring out what would kind of be the most important, most essential uh, catering kitchen equipment that you might want to have so that you can go do your, um, your caterings and, and, you know, in home um, chefing. And, um, and then maybe as you're pursuing that, cause you need that day one, right. To, to really get started. The other thing that exactly. would then would would be to use the city's funding um, to build a website, right? To I started the website. Yeah, great. So so website. Um, so maybe some more branding. Um, you know, you could maybe buy yourself like a tablet or a laptop, right? So that you could do um, QuickBooks, and you can be doing. Um, website updates on that because I feel like when we talked you were saying that you were happy to have somebody else do the website updates maybe if you made that kind of uh, equipment purchase you'd be able to do it yourself a little bit more too um, online ordering you know things like that so so it, it's not um, and and this is applies to everybody it's not one or the other with these funding sources it's layering them in okay. terms of timing as well as uses. So like, again, speaking from experience with the commissary, I mean, we had like a laundry list of funders and we needed all of them in order to make the project possible. The other thing is that once you have the business plan developed and the financial information together and organized, then everybody's basically looking for some version of the same thing. So you can go out and apply for different sources of funding, grants and loans at the same time once you're once you have a certain amount of information together so there's no reason not to right got it taking it all in because i just you know yeah. I was just figuring, figuring it out for what i needed because i'm after like working i've been working with morgan's cereal bar i don't want a restaurant <laughs> 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 like that it's not that's it's too much for me. So I, I definitely like the lane that I'm in, but I know I need more tools to be more efficient. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think part of it too, um, and Dallas, thank you for 
being the one willing to speak up because I think what you're saying, this whole process is very similar to what other people are just listening for right now. Um, is that uh, now that you're into the commissary, right? You're official. Um, you know, you just you just start slowly growing while you're there, you know, and and seeing what it is that you do need. And I, again, I, I, you know, with my experience in the food industry and also with the commissary is that part of you wants to buy everything up front and have it done, but you learn so much along the way about what you really need. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing wrong with bringing your stuff from home to start, right? Nobody's going to judge you for that. And that's true for, you know, everybody else here that like, you got to use your pots and pans from home and like a wooden spoon that was your grandmother. It's like, it's good luck, you know? Um, so there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then in terms of if there are other pieces of equipment that are like bigger and more expensive that you need, um, send me and Arthur an email because it might be something that we would, that we should have on site anyways. Um, and it's something we could discuss, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's now that you're legal the biggest like work is behind you. And now it's just about like getting your feet under you and getting a following. And that's great that you've got your website going and you have a great social media. And, um, and yeah, I think, I think personally, I think that Kiva would be a great start to getting that funding that you needed. Okay. Thank you. That's why I was here for this call to listen and learn a lot of different stuff. Great. anybody else or we'll just keep picking on Dallas and she'll uh, <laughs> talk for everybody. <laughs> um, I will, I will say also that, so Karen on our team has been doing a lot of great work in, um, in learning more about what other business service providers um, provide in the area, especially when it comes to entrepreneurs as they're starting out, uh, the commissary, uh, no surprise, is very focused on the food industry. And so it's important for us to understand if we're going to be referring people out uh, for business plans or for uh, general um, just guidance on um, launching a business that we are, um, we know what they're doing and kind of what their strengths are and how that fits with different uh, men, members or prospective members of the commissary. So, um, so that will be going on our website eventually. Um, but if anybody uh, really needs that right now and Dallas, I am gonna hook you up with somebody that I, I have an idea for, um, for a business plan. But um, if anybody wants that information now, just email uh, me and Karen, and I'll put both of our emails in the chat so that uh, you can uh, email us directly asking for that information. We're just working on formatting it before we put it up on the website. I do that ATL instead of ALT on my name. So. Oh, look at me thinking I could do it on my own. Um. fixing it right now. Yeah, we're going to we're putting information up about general business training that exists in the community and I think we should add the business plan preparers as a separate resource which I can do quickly and um, we're going to be constantly updating it. I was on a call with Cornell uh, what is the name of it Center of Excellence for Food and Agriculture yesterday and I learned so much that I didn't know before about resources they're physically located in Geneva, but there are tremendous resources that they offer specifically for food businesses. And we have a contact there who can help. And the more I find out that kind of information, that'll always go up on the website, you know, within a, a short amount of time after we get the info. So check back is, I guess, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Our website's always being updated with information. Um, if no, okay. Final call for questions. No questions. Okay, then I'm going to end it on a positive note, like how Thad ended his presentation and say, in terms of funders, we have a lot of people here who want to help, especially in the current climate where the food industry has really been hit hard. Uh, a lot of maybe 
rules and way of doing things have been slightly relaxed to really be helpful to food businesses. So know that there are people who want to help. Uh, and to Karen's point, uh, the, our region has some amazing resources when it comes to the food industry. So if you're looking to do prepared food or packaged food goods, um, there's a lot of information there. And we hope at the commissary that if we don't have that answer for you, we at least are able to connect you to people who can. And Cornell Center for Excellence is a great example of that. And yet another member of the commissary's board. So we've got Thad and Malik and then Kathy Young at Cornell who are all on our board. And so everybody's talking to each other and we're, we're learning from each other for sure. Um, so then to finish, let's get 13 minutes back. Hopefully we'll all just go stand outside and like stare at the sun uh, in this beautiful weather. And um, thank you to everyone for participating. Thank you so much to our panelists. Um, as Hannah just put in the chat, we will have um, this recording up on our website and we are going to also uh, put up the PowerPoints. If, if um, Carly, Katie, you already sent yours. Carly, if you could send yours, that would be, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, all right, then I think we'll end it there. We're getting lots of good feedback already. So um, thanks everybody and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.